All right, helicopter, take your sweet time. It's five o'clock somewhere. Hello from Los Angeles, I'm Taylor. For those who ask me about my hello, no, I'm not Australian, but I think it's fun to say it that way. If you're new here, I am a management consultant. And if you follow me over on Instagram, you probably already know that I have been on a traveling project recently, which means that I wake up at 5.20 AM every single Monday morning, take a 7.30 AM flight from New York City to Dallas, work on site at our client's headquarters Monday through Thursday, Thursday afternoon, fly back to New York or anywhere else for the same price. So I've come home to LA a couple times and work from home on Friday. So it's a lot of travel. And with a lot of travel comes the opportunity to have a travel day from hell. A travel day from hell. Travel day from hell. Which is what I had, and I'm gonna tell you all about it. And if I may, a few life lessons and takeaways at the end. And this is a bit of a story time, so we're gonna have a glass of wine while I tell it. <laughs> I'm sure my parents really appreciate that I'm doing this on their couch. Get out there, you little bugger. Ooh. And I actually will pour the wine over a little table I've set up for myself, because I'm not that much of a savage. Or am I? Don't underestimate me. Hear that? All right, perfect pour. No drips. Cheers. It's five o'clock somewhere. Okay, so this travel day from hell starts on a Thursday afternoon. I'm in Texas working at the client site and it has just been a rough day at work. Just one of those days, you know? So I was especially looking forward to getting back to New York that night and sleeping in my own bed. So on these Thursday afternoons, I usually take a 3.45 p.m. flight from Dallas to New York. So I start packing up my things with my coworkers around 2 p.m. We head to the Dallas Fort Worth airport in an Uber together and the security line is insanely long. I have pre-check wow. and the line for pre-check was longer than the line for general boarding, which I'd never seen. Anyway, we budgeted enough time so I didn't have to worry about not making my flight. It was just a minor inconvenience. Also my baseline airport is LAX. So my threshold for a busy airport is pretty high. This was just a really, really long line for Dallas. I, it was around spring break, maybe that's why. Anyway, so I make it past security, not with enough time to grab lunch before boarding, but enough time to make my flight. And then my flight gets delayed two hours. And not just my flight, but every single flight to New York City, whether it was to JFK, LaGuardia, or Newark, New Jersey, which is just right across the river from New York City. So my flight was delayed until 5.45 p.m. Not a huge deal, delays happen. I just knew that I would now be landing in New York around 10.30 p.m., so late, but not that late. I'd still get to my apartment around 11.30 at night, which, you know, rookie numbers in my book. I had work to do anyway, so I took the air train in the Dallas-Fort Worth airport to another terminal to go to the Centurion Lounge because I recently got the Amex Platinum card, which gives me access to said lounge. I love it. This part, I did not mind. It gave me some time to eat and the spread was really nice. But again, it was a rough day at work. So I told the bartender, mama needs a drink and a drink I got. I told her to surprise me and she gave me this little gin and champagne mixed cocktail. This was a highlight of the day. <laughs> After I ate, I went back to the conference room table in the back of the lounge to open my laptop and start doing work. I made friends with the other lady sitting at the conference room table. She also didn't have the best day at work. So we cheers each other to good health and whatever else. And she told me to ask you guys if you would hit the like button. Thank you. You guys know I gotta sneak that in there somewhere. So anyway, I work for two hours and then I air train back to my terminal in time for boarding. I get on the flight and after a remarkably long time on the tarmac, we finally take off. And the next part is where it gets very interesting. But first, if I may give you a little cliffhanger and in the spirit of drinking this wine, I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Bright Cellars. Bright Cellars is a wine subscription company that matches you to wines from all over the world curated to your palate. You take a seven question quiz on their website where you answer questions like what's your favorite type of chocolate? How do you like to drink your tea? They gather your taste preferences and send you personalized bottles directly to you in 100% recycled and plastic free materials. So no need to go to the grocery store and try to choose a wine simply based on the label alone. Each box comes with wine education cards for each bottle that outlines the tasting notes, suggested pairings, best serving temperature and origin. Bright Cellars sent me six matches. I already finished this sweet white and I'm especially excited to try this world line Cabernet from California. I've heard that this one is a especially good. I am not a wine expert by any means. I like having wine nights with my girlfriends or the occasional glass at night, but there's something about the education cards that tell you a bit about each one and how the bottles are new ones that you've never tried before that are personalized to your taste that make it very fun and exciting. So whether you're an aficionado or a casual wine drinker like myself, I highly recommend this service. Bright Cellars is giving you guys 50% off your first six bottle box, which is six bottles for $55, including shipping, which comes out to carry the one $9 and 16 cents per bottle. Click the link in my description to get started. And thank you again, Bright Sellers, for supporting my channel by sponsoring this video. You guys have been amazing to work with. Now back to the unpaid programming. 
So we finally take off from Dallas. It's about a three and a half hour flight. There's some turbulence as we enter the New York City area and right at about the three and a half hour mark, my aviation spidey senses start telling me that we've been flying in a circle. Not this kind of circle that I like to fly in with my dad, but you know, a normal circle. This. I could not see the ground because the visibility was so bad, but we were above a very highly light polluted area and it was about the time that we were supposed to be landing. So I knew we were above New York. Wow. The captain eventually gets on the intercom to tell us that we've been in a holding pattern above LaGuardia airport for a while and that we'd have to stay there until the weather cleared up because the vertical visibility above the runway was only one eighth of a mile. We remained in that holding pattern for 45 more minutes and the captain finally gets back on the intercom to tell us that the vertical visibility above the runway was now 50 feet. We were running out of fuel and we had to divert to Philadelphia. Everyone in the plane just starts laughing. I mean, first the flight was delayed two hours, then turbulence, and then another 45 minutes in this holding pattern. And now we were diverting to a completely different city. So I knew that I'd be getting back to my bed much later that night since I knew we'd have to stay in Philly until the weather cleared up in New York. So we get to Philly very quickly, I would say in 30 minutes at most, and landing there actually felt very nostalgic. For those who don't know, I went to college in Philadelphia, so I lived there for four years and have a lot of love for the city. Anyway, beside the point. So we waited on the tarmac in Philly for maybe another 20 minutes. I figured that we would have to sit there on the plane for, you know, an hour or however long until the weather in New York cleared up and then we would fly back to New York. Well, after a bit, they had us deep plane, which I knew wasn't a good sign. So we all get off the plane. It's like midnight at this point, And we were supposed to originally land in New York at 8.30 PM. And we were all waiting around at the gate in an otherwise empty airport to hear next steps. Next steps didn't come for a minute. So I went potty. I called my parents on the West coast to let them know what was going on. On. By the time I return from the potty, I see a couple people that looked like chickens running around with their heads cut off. So I figured, oh, an announcement must have been made. I asked one of the chickens what the grand update was, and they said that the flight had been delayed until the next day at 11 a.m. First of all, 11 a.m., that's not even that early. If the flight was postponed to like 6 a.m., I probably would have just slept in the airport. The airline also had no obligation to give out food or hotel vouchers because it was a weather related delay, it wasn't their fault. So annoying, but understandable. At that point, believe it or not, I actually wasn't down in the dumps. It was almost funny, like how many things that day had just gone wrong one after the other. So my spirits were actually pretty high and my motivation to get home to my own bed was even higher. So I looked around at the chickens, again, the chickens being the other people. I see a group of three chickens talking to each other. They look cool, friendly, not like murderers. I poke my head into their little circle and I ask, are you guys by any chance Ubering to New York? And if so, can I join you? They said yes, at which point we introduced ourselves, got a couple more people to join our group so we can take an Uber XL, which seats five people. We kicked a few people out that would go into Long Island and our final beloved group ended up being me, Kelvin, Christina, Kyle, and Denise. I'll tell you more about them later. Some of us had checked bags, some of us didn't, so we went to baggage claim together. I won't bore you with these details, but because it was so late, there was only one crew working at the Philadelphia airport, so it took over an hour for us to get our bags and Denise's bag never came out. Turns out her bag was rerouted to Newark Airport. I don't know how that happened. So eventually we all leave the airport, call an Uber XL, and this is where the fun really starts. Kelvin was this fun and sassy guy originally from Nigeria and his energy was the best. He didn't waste a minute to get on the phone with customer service to get his money back for this shit show. Christina was from Puerto Rico. She was the best kind of quirky and fun person to be around. Kyle was more reserved and a great voice of reason for the group. And Denise was awesome. She reminded me so much of my aunt and she was as Southern as they come. She said shit in three syllables, you know, like she it and hell no, that kind of thing. I loved it. And she sort of took on a mother figure for all of us. So we are finally in this Uber XL together and Denise asked our Uber driver if we could please stop somewhere, just drive through somewhere for food because a few of us were starving. Our Uber driver being the most Philly person of all time is like, yeah, I'll take you to Wawa. For those who don't know what Wawa is, it's just so special to me, but it's really just a chain of gas stations and convenience stores in Pennsylvania, Delaware, Jersey, whatever, a few other states in the East Coast. But I lived off of it for four years. I, I have such a soft spot for Wawa. And I think Johnny Knoxville has a Wawa tattoo. I don't know why I know that, but it feels like home. Honey, I'm home. I love Wawa, you're gonna love it. Here in Wawa, say hi. <laughs> Want to be in the video? Uh, yes. <laughs> All right, here in Wawa, getting a little snacky poo. What time is it? One, one o'clock. 106. 107. <laughs> 107. <laughs> getting a snack and then to New York. All right. So after Wawa, we embark on this a little over two hour drive 
talking the whole entire way, getting to know each other, telling stories, telling jokes. Each one of them were so kind and had their own unique stories to tell. It just restored my faith in humanity. Not that I had lost faith in humanity, but I couldn't have found a more random yet kind group of people to share this shit show with. So we finally pull up to New York and we were lucky that all but one of us were going to Manhattan. In fact, two of them were going to within the same block of each other, which was a crazy coincidence. So I got back to my room at 3 a.m. I actually opened my laptop to do some work because I couldn't do it earlier. I made it, finally. I don't know what this is. It looks like a pimple, but it's not. And now it's 3 a.m. Eastern and I have to catch up on the work that I wasn't able to do. <laughs> Fun times. What an adventure, you guys. It was quite the adventure. And for those who are curious how much it cost, it was $411, which for a two hour drive that time of night divided by five, I would have paid double that. <laughs> Without getting too cheesy, yes, it was a travel day from hell because it started with a rough day at work. The flight was delayed two hours. We rerouted to another city and then drove another two hours just to get home. But it was also an adventure and a story that I will remember forever. And I know I didn't give you guys the details of everyone in the Uber's background and the different stories that we told each other, but I guess grouping up with these five perfect strangers just reminded me to give people the benefit of the doubt. Everyone's got their own stories, their own life that you have no idea about. Okay, I don't to get in a dude's van if he asks you to help him look for his puppy. I'm just saying I was pleasantly surprised by this random group of five people, but yeah, still exercise caution, kids. And I do think that people are inherently good. So this trip had its silver linings. And of course, this travel day from hell is a first world problem. You know, my health was never compromised besides, I guess, losing a little bit of sleep, but I earned some traveling consulting stripes this day. Tell me in the comments your craziest travel stories or just say hi. I read all my comments and I respond to most of them. So I'll talk to you down there. Like this video, and subscribe if you made it this far and I'll see you guys soon. Turtle out and cheers to you guys. I feel like I have to make sure it's filming because sometimes just once I wasn't filming and okay yeah it's filming. Good. <laughs> All right helicopter take your sweet time and oh.